Well, it's been a nice little break from these auto battle only challenges. So let's have another one. And just like always, there's a hint in this video about the next challenge. First person to comment it gets their comment pinned. So we did FF1 and FF2. Let's keep things rolling now with can I beat FF3 using only auto battle. And my honest prediction here, I think the answer is no. There's going to be a lot of troublesome things later that we need to try and navigate around. But with how these things end up going sometimes, we get surprised. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But now though, let's all put our hands together and welcome the despicable group of Ko-Fi, Twitch, Twitter and Discord back for yet another adventure absolutely not hinting at anything here by the way there might be some links down in the description though now our story begins once again with a backgroundless group of characters instead of an orphan because we're doing the pixel remaster version instead of the 3d version the game forces it into our first battle with some goblins and so we turn auto battle on, which means I'm now stuck using only attacks for the rest of the game. And this goes great when half my attacks miss in the tutorial fight. Lovely. Okay, but now we just head through the cave, stealing everything in here until we get to our first boss, a giant turtle, which thankfully we don't have the trouble which we had from them in FF2. And he hits me a few times, but that's kind of it. I mean, come on guys, it's a tutorial boss after all. Of course we're not gonna struggle. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I'm getting flashbacks of some other challenges I've done. Anyway, right after the boss, we find out our kids are on LSD. Don't do drugs, people, or you might think a magic talking crystal inside a random cave will give you superpowers in this case though it kind of does so we swap from the onion knight job to the monk job onion knight is hands down the best job in the game when you are above level 91 but before then it's pretty much the worst monk on the other hand will be great for us right now as with auto battle only we're limited to just plain attacks so Monk's higher defense, strength, and HP pool will be nice. It also offers the highest HP gain for level ups right now. The downside is the magic defense for the class is shockingly bad. Like really, really bad. And that is one of the problems I mentioned earlier. Magic is essentially just a giant nuke in this game. Anywho go straight back into the cave and open the treasure chests then in town we steal everything look we're orphans okay and we're gonna fit that stereotype to a t just like we're gonna steal everything from the next town the castle and today's sponsor me did you know that you can support the channel over on Ko-Fi right now? Not only do you get insanely awesome benefits like early access to videos and discounted merch, but you are also helping the future of this channel. Once we can hire Daff full-time, which is the first goal we have on there, then you guys will get not only the weekly challenge video, but you will also get two brand new weekly series so we'll go from one video every friday to one video every monday wednesday and friday we just have to hit the first goal for that to happen and as a benefit you can support as much or as little as you want on ko-fi it's entirely up to you learn more down below at the link in the description okay so tldr princess is kidnapped towns are cursed etc the usual so let's go beat the gin the reason for the curse who is conveniently hiding out just behind the castle in a cave and we get there with the airship we just stole oh and remember how i mentioned about bad magic defense well a normal fire spell at the castle from the griffin left me with one hp the gin is gonna be horrible so let's go fight it we also meet princess sarah on the way now she's here to save the day and she joins our party except she doesn't do anything she also says we can talk to her but i'd rather not 
Oh, and her only way to seal the gin doesn't work. So the next best thing, we punch him in the face. And remember how I said just a few seconds ago the gin is going to be horrible? Well, I get some hits in and then he casually one shots two of my characters back to back, which was nice. I get a few more hits in and then he murders Kofi with a fire spell. Yay, one character left. Until another fire spell comes out and I'm expecting a horrible, painful death. But no, Twitch survives the hit and I kid you not, just one HP. My last character alive has just one HP. And because it's auto battle only, I can't heal. So it's all or nothing. And then luckily we get a crit and the gin goes down. Not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting anything anywhere near this close. So now, let's go get some Mithril, upgrade the airship, and instead of casually flying over the mountains or the giant boulder, we're just gonna crash into the mountain and destroy the ship in the process. Look guys, orphans don't have the best of educations, okay? It's understandable they aren't that smart. Now, a few things happen. We see Bahamut, who we leave alone for now, and technically we don't have to do anything with Bahamut, but just for daft, if we can make it that far, then later I'm gonna come back and murder it just because I can. Also, yes, I forgot to pick up the canoe, so I had the inevitable walk of shame. But now we're on to another problem with this run, which is very unique to FF3. The times it forces us to use mini. Obviously, mini means our damage is basically non-existent, but there are multiple times and even a boss soon where we are forced to be minied. This also means because of MP, I need to keep a white mage in the party, essentially making that slot useless. And this right here is the problem with mini. We can't do any damage at all because when under mini, their physical attack and defense stats are reduced to one. All attacks and spells against them have 100 accuracy and damage from all sources is doubled. This is essentially a case of we're boned. So I do the next best thing. I abuse quick saves to get through the area without battles. And yes, it took freaking forever. Once we're outside, we need to do a little leveling so that Discord has more MP as a white mage. This way, we can apply and remove mini without needing to heal, since I think I can only apply mini to get in the next dungeon and then remove it once we're inside. Sadly, I remembered wrong. Obviously, that only works later with Toad, which means the giant rat absolutely murdered me. He also has 1050 HP, aka I need to essentially hit him 1050 times. Sounds easy if I could grind, right? Well, he also has poison attacks, which means no matter how high my HP is, he can still easily murder me in a long drawn out fight. I do have an idea though. It's gonna suck for me because it means my future stats end up slightly ruined and it will take a stupid amount of time. There's also the fact I honestly don't know if it will even work. And that idea is we abuse the monk's job level. You see, even though my damage is related to my strength stat, which is reduced to one when minied, my monk's job level also has a multiplier for when I'm barehanded. My hopes is a high job level lets me do more than one damage, and I get a guaranteed job level after every four actions done. Normally, I would just defend four times and then kill the mobs to power level my job. Auto battle only means I can't do that, so it's time for a slow, painful grind. I do try the boss again at character level 22 and job level 30 for a proof of concept, just to see if there's any difference. And there wasn't, still doing one damage. But the multiplier is low at lower levels, so I'm hoping my job level just isn't high enough. So I bite the bullet and go back to finish off the grind. Believe it or not as well, but I have a few other things to try if this doesn't work. For my own sanity though, I'm hoping it doesn't come to that. Eventually, I reach job level 99 and we go at it again. 
and things go both good and bad. So firstly, I'm still only doing one damage per hit, sadly, but the fight lasted ages. And when I say ages, I mean I sat there and watched it for five minutes, went and warmed my food up in the microwave, edit, and then made a drink, and it was still going after that. And while I do eventually die, with how quickly I was getting attacks in and how long it went on for, surely it would have been close, right? Well, I know for a fact my other idea might work on getting past the boss, but it would also make the next 60% of the game have no challenge at all. So we're going to scrap that idea for now. Instead, we're going to drop down to our knees, pull the trousers of RNGs down with our teeth, and in a sweet, innocent way, ask him to be merciful in exchange for a few favors. Because this method is going to rely on pure RNG. We need to hope no poison, we need to hope for good evasions, and we need to hope for as little magic as possible. And thankfully, the no poison should be quite easy, as we seem to have less chance to be afflicted with it with our higher levels now with how long the fight lasted though i do honestly think we have a shot it's just gonna take a while thankfully though with using auto battle i don't need to be here for those attempts so while i'm doing other stuff i just start the fight and check in on it every 15 minutes or so and i think orange jesus likes me a little better now because after a few hours i had my win i seriously can't believe what we had to do just to defeat a bloody rat and the sad part is i can't even remember if there's any more forced mini sections or not i know there's a part in hien's castle and there's a tower later so things are gonna suck but at least for now we can progress and because we're not stupidly strong with monk having a level 99 job level i'm going to swap over to my warrior class and see just how much difference the few extra character levels make we shouldn't be that strong though. But now, let's move on. We get the Toad Spell at Gulgan Gulch and head over to the Tower of Owen. And thankfully, after using Toad to enter the tower, we can remove it. So no more horrible quick save memes and no more horrible RNG fights. Also, buy new gear in the City of the Ancients before we run off and fight Medusa. And while well, I guess level 30 is a little high as even as a warrior, we're still doing 300 damage and the white mage is still doing 150. But my defense is also pretty good as well. It's not a huge deal breaker though as we have one more boss who is a lot more troublesome than Medusa anyway. And then we're on to the lower continent where our current level and stats really won't mean much of anything, especially for Garuda since I won't be able to jump cheese it. Before that though, Gutsko, and honestly nothing special here this guy is just one of those joke bosses salamander afterwards in the molten cave though is a different story his defense is much higher meaning i do less damage and while his melee attack can be mostly ignored he has another attack called flame this is aoe and deals a solid 100 to 150 damage to each of my characters and in fact he even managed to drop me to half health before we slaughter the giant lizard. Then we get some cool new jobs from the fire crystal, and guess what? We're never gonna use them. Great, huh? Well, then we get kidnapped, so I guess it's time to go fight Hien. And this fight is a whole boatload of annoying. Because my weapons are elemental, they trigger Hien's barrier shift, meaning my damage can either be a couple hundred or 20. Hien is also pretty strong with his magic hitting me for between 200 and 300 damage. And then the icing on the cake is he has Confuse, which he was really not shy on using it on Twitter. Twice in a row. Twitter actually tried to murder me twice. Now look, I know Twitter is weird and all, but that's a sentence I never thought I'd have to say. While we do manage to take Hien down, can you see one of the problems already slowly appearing? My magic defense is non-existent, my elemental damage is almost non-existent, and I have no healing, which means pretty soon, and I do mean very soon, we're going to be playing the race game of me trying to kill things before they kill me. Especially because nearly all the freaking bosses later love high level magic. But hey, now we can speak to King Argus and move on to the lower continent. Well, the weird destroyed version anyway. 
So, grab Aria, the priestess of the water crystal. Convenient how only two people survived, and one of them just so happens to be the only person who's able to let me get to the water crystal, huh? Well, before that, we have to fight the tentacle god himself. Control yourself, ladies. I'm on about cracking. And, well, that was kind of easy, which wasn't totally out of the realm of possibility given my levels. But we have one more easy boss, and then things get really problematic again. Both because they get stronger and more powerful magic, but also because with the defeat of Kraken, we also get the Black Bell job. This has the highest HP growth in the game, does amazing damage when its job level gets higher, and has basically non-existent magic defense. Can you see where the problem lies? Anywho, after we wake up in a moor, since the world just changed on us, it's time to go to the city of Eldorado. Okay, maybe not. But it's a giant mansion of gold, which I really wish we could just take a pickaxe to. Instead, though, we'll just have to take said pickaxe to the next boss, Goldor. And this guy actually works in our favor this time around, because he's super strong against magical attacks, which obviously we can't use. And with us swapping over to Black Belt, my damage is naturally much better, so he dies pretty quickly. And with that, the last easy boss is done. So, get the last set of jobs from the Earth Crystal that we're never gonna use. Or at least that would be the case, except Goldor decided to kick us in the balls and destroy the fake crystal. So then, it's time to invade a new country for a boss fight with Garuda. Because it's not like there's anything else fun to do in this world. And I died. Honestly, we all saw this coming, right? His AoE lightning attack, the only thing he basically has, was doing a casual 500 to 600 damage per hit to me. AKA, he can essentially two-shot me. Remember what I said about horrible magic defense? Yep, this is that. I think, though, I can edge a win out with a little crit luck. And I want to avoid grinding if I can. So we're going to try for some RNG here, and it doesn't work, so we'll have to do a few more fights. I just need either a few job levels or more than 1,600 HP, and that should be enough to get us through it. And with that, we manage it. The extra job levels were enough though, it seems, as I still could have took one more lightning attack. But, well, it's going to help out a lot for the next boss anyway. So, it's time to fly off with our shiny new airship since the gods destroyed my other one. Oh, and say hi to Doga. Then we go ransack the Temple of Time, wake Une up from her long, long nap that we all aspire to have, get another new airship. Seriously, how many is that now? And why is it way too many? But above all else, why can none of them fly above mountains? We literally have a ship that jumps over mountains, which isn't exactly what we're going to use it for because we need to go grab the fang of earth the final fang which will let me get to psychos tower and murder zonde at the top i just need to wait 40 minutes for 23 other people oh and no you're not seeing things hector Nair really did casually just two shot discord and three shot twitter then Another Quake takes Twitch down to 300 and Kofi down to 500. AKA, he can now casually just one-shot my final two characters, which thankfully doesn't happen as he dies just in the nick of time. But hey, I told you I wasn't overpowered. This guy also has nothing on the next two bosses, which even with healing allowed can decimate normal parties, especially parties with no magic defense like mine. So... It's time to kill our godparents. Well, okay, maybe maybe they're not our godparents, but they do have a lot of relations to our poor little orphans. Oh, well, everybody else in this game dies, so might as well add two more to the list. Right after, jump more rocks. Now, Doga is a little straightforward. His attacks basically three-shot me, except for Flare, which two-shots me. He has quite a lot of health, but we do manage to take him down. The problem... Well, I can't heal before the next boss fight with Une, which means any health I lose here is gone for the next fight. So having Discord die and the others below means I'm pretty much for sure dying on Une, which is exactly what 
happens. Une has Snowstorm, an AoE spell which deals big damage, and she has Holy instead of Flare, which she uses to just casually pick me off. I did make a little bit of a mess in my underwear when I saw Twitch survive with just 4 HP, but sadly, Snowstorm comes out right after and murders my two remaining characters. Honestly, I knew this was going to happen, and I just wanted the footage of me getting obliterated, and also to slightly see how close I could get. But now, we're going to get more damage and a little more health, because the Crystal Tower has tons of bosses, which easily deal two times more damage than both of these. So, some extra stats is going to be super helpful. And so, we're off to the Sunken Cave. A pretty nice grinding spot for us right now, where we'll gain some levels for HP and some job levels for damage. I go up to level 50, which has me at a job level of mid-20s. This almost doubles my HP pool and damage, so time to try again. Although, we basically only go from getting two shots to instead being killed in three to four hits, depending on what attack Doka uses. But thanks to my much higher damage, we take him out before he can do too much to us. Une, on the other hand, wants to spam Snowstorm on us, which is AoE, and she very nearly kills Discord and Twitter with it. Have you guys noticed that Discord has been the major punching bag this entire run? Whenever there's a death, it's basically always him. Poor guy. Anyway, with Doga and Une dead, we can now move on to the tower, where we find the real earth crystal and titan a much stronger version of hedekin air but while he is stronger so are we and so we take him down while only nearly losing twitch which i'm sure a lot of you don't mind that happening and now with that one done i bet you all forgot about what i said earlier on including our lovely editor daff even though she probably listened to it 20 plus times let me refresh the memory of everybody still watching. We have no reason to kill Bahamut, but we're going to do it anyway for the giggles. But things didn't exactly go according to plan, because he hit me once with one melee attack, and then he spammed Mega Flare on me, which deals over a thousand damage to each party member. Okay, Bahamut, point proved. And Daff, wipe that grin off your face, because we're not leaving here until he dies so attempt number two and aside from getting mega fled instantly he decided to be nice and hit me with two melee attacks before he died in the most beautiful fashion easily silly little weak dragon and for beating him we got the insanely awesome new summon which we can't use called bahamor the derpy baby brother of bahamut or the little thing that hides behind Daff. Okay, now I've had my fun and pissed my editor off again, let's continue the challenge. So off to Eureka where we can get a ribbon and then have a little boss rush for equipment we can't or won't use. First up is Amon, who goes down no issue. Same with the Ninja and the Kuniochi. They do plenty of damage, but nothing I can't heal after the fight. Closest we had to trouble was nearly having a death to Guardian. And then, with the power of overwhelming friendship, we make it to Zonde, where we just casually disappoint everybody by getting manhandled. Like, it's not even close. We got destroyed. And Zonde is an absolute breeze compared to Cloud of Darkness. Honestly, though, I fully expected this to happen because Black Belts just cannot survive high end magic. We're going to absolutely need something that's both tanky and has high damage, which sadly isn't easy. We can be tanky to normal or magic damage with most classes, but not both. And on top of that, we need good damage. This means one thing. It's time for a grind and a big one. So it's back to Bahamut's Lair, the best leveling spot in the game. Here, we level up to around the upper 80s before moving on to Psyker's Tower, where we're going to grind floors 5, 6, and 7 for the three colored dragons, because we're going to farm some equipment drops. Also, fun fact, take a look at the stats difference between Black Belt and Onion Knight across some different levels, and look at what just a few extra levels can do. 
once we have all the equipment from the dragons we're obviously going to be at level 99 which there's nothing left for us to do other than have a rematch with zonde and well pretty big difference huh oh and then cloud murders us horribly don't you just love unwinnable fights now you might be asking yourself why i did this well for cloud of darkness i'm going to re-equip black belt and we'll see how a max job level max character level black belt handles it shall we right after the four dark crystal bosses and these do a nice job of highlighting how impossible this would have been with just black belts aside from the massive amounts of hp they all have their magic is powerful they have lots of status magic and araman can even deal a massive 300 damage to a perfectly equipped max level onion knight on black belts that would have been 10 times higher easily but then when we get to the cloud of darkness of course karma bends me over and we get freaking god rng rolls on her attacks seriously no haste no protect no lightning and no bad breath she literally only used one melee attack and then some particle beams this is like beyond godly rng and because of that black belts managed to win the freaking fight i've done two playthroughs of ff3 at pixel remaster now one on youtube and one on stream in both cases i had black belt in the party and they got absolutely incinerated by lightning so of course that doesn't happen this time around i'm honestly a little annoyed that happened now especially after getting all the onion equipment well okay another challenge done so now while i'm dying inside all that's left to say is did you find out what the hidden hint was in this video for the next challenge if so remember to comment it and i will pin your comment also remember to check my socials delf socials and everything else down in the description like maybe buying some merch our only flan stuff is awesome and we have two new designs coming soon so get ready for now though everybody thanks for watching and i'll see you later